So we're here in Canberra and we're about to catch up with Mari Pengestu, a former Minister for Trade and also Tourism and the Creative Economy in Indonesia, and a former Finance Minister, Khatib Basri. These two are also well-known economists and we're really keen to talk to them about innovation between Australia and Indonesia, why it's so important and also why it's so important now at this point in the economics of both countries. Uh, Kati Basri and Mari Pengestu are also co-conveners of the ANU Indonesia Update, where we can find out more every year about what's actually happening in Indonesia. I'd just perhaps start with you, Park. Could you outline to me the economic situation for Indonesia at the moment? Well, I think I, I would say that the Indonesian economy is at the crossroads at this moment because the resource boom is over, and we cannot continue to, you know, to maintain the uh, cheap labor strategy because we cannot compete with Bangladesh because their, their wages is only one third compared to us. So the only way to move into the uh, the next stage is to improve the quality of human capital and also supported by innovation. And if you look at our export, 60% is mostly energy and commodity related. Mm. So the role of this innovation, the R&D, will become a very important for the future. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, that's definitely where we are now, crossroads, right? Diversify the economy from commodity-based economy. And we recognize that we have to uh, go to the next stage of our economic development. So it's, it's also not just industrialization, export-oriented industrialization as of the past. Uh, I think we need to address uh, modernizing our services sector. And that includes tourism, that includes the modern services that will make us more efficient, the whole economy more efficient. And it's also about in innovation uh, and creativity. Uh, and this is actually an area where, uh, you know, with Australia, uh, given uh, what I know, I've been following the Indonesia-Australia SEPA negotiations, I think one area that has been identified uh, is actually vocational education, capacity building in vocational education. So like what he said, uh, we need to build up our human capital. Uh, the skill base that's going to be need needed uh, for an innovation creative uh, based economy is going to be different from the past. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact that we have this huge transformation of technology that can be uh, an opportunity, but it, it also has a downside if we can't bring the people along. Yeah. The President is focusing on tourism as one area of growth, as you mentioned, and you're a former tourism minister. Uh, how important is it, do you think, that a country like Australia collaborates with Indonesia at this point, as you call it, a pivotal point? How important is it to collaborate right now on helping uh, with that vision that he has? Uh, I think, uh, I always say we are two great countries which are neighbors to each other, but yet the economic interaction between us is so low, you know. Uh, and we are a big country, we have a huge domestic market, so it's more actually, why is Australia not uh, so engaged with Indonesia kind of question. And I, I think that's actually where we should see the opportunity for Australia and Indonesia to cooperate, not just in the bilateral sense, but how we can actually make each other more innovative, more competitive to service the regional market. Yeah? not just the bilateral aspect. So I think on tourism, uh, let's just put it on human capital as a beginning. I think uh, besides tourism, I always thought health and education are two other sectors that Indonesia and uh, Australia can, can really uh, benefit from each other. Uh, and and uh, this is actually think you know sort of thinking ahead. That's probably the, also the two areas. Yeah, the president is also very concerned about health and education. So I think it can be com combined uh, very nicely. And tourism, to me, is always very linked to creative economy. It's your film industry. It's your uh, all these creative industries that are actually uh, Indonesian based. Uh, sorry, Australia based. There are these work platforms. One is called 99 Design, and one is called Freelance, which are Australian Australian based and which Indonesian uh, designers are actually uh, members of these platforms so it's already happening despite what the government does or does not do. And if I may add, I think I completely agree with Mary regarding this you know education and health because uh, if you look at Indonesia one of the our potential is about the young population and also the mm -hmm. rising middle class yeah. and it's typical of country with the rising middle class uh, they are talking especially about the good quality of education 
also about health. So I think both country, Indonesia and Australia, mm. if we can work together on uh, those two issues, that will be uh, very useful to both country. Mm. Mm. Uh, but as we heard, um, the we've got a, a presidential election coming up. We've got uh, slowing or, or growth that's sort of sitting at a certain point. That begs the question is, would you think Indonesia will be open to innovation and change and things which are a little bit difficult? Or will it be a bit more uh, tricky to implement these things at this point? Well, first of all, I have to say that 5% is not bad at all compared <laughs> to many countries, including to Australia. Um, but the second one, I think, like it or not, it is inevitable that we have to move into the, you know, the need for the innovation <clears throat> because we cannot continue to, you know, to, to, to keep our economy like only on the resource base. Yeah? So I think despite all this, this process is not always easy, but definitely we need to move into that direction. If I could add, uh, I think, uh, you know, we have become a sort of, if you like, a normal country that, you know, leading up to elections is always a difficult time uh, to use up your political capital to undertake any bold reforms. Uh, and so I think, uh, I think we can just sort of think about how uh, we can actually push for reforms in that kind of world. And I think one answer which has already been talked about within government and also been suggested is to have special economic zones. So if you are not ready to open up your education and health sector quite yet, maybe you can do it within these economic, special economic zones which can be more open uh, than the, the general policy. So I think that that's one possible direction. Whether it happens before 2019 or not, that's something we, we hope uh, will at least start. Uh, and I do think that uh, in, in uh, areas like tourism, uh, there is less less uh, resistance, I, I, I yeah, guess, I yeah, uh, because I, in, in in the result of the survey that will be presented uh, later today, it actually shows that Indonesians, while they may be a little bit uh, anti-foreign in terms of uh, workers, uh, import products, foreign investment, they're actually very welcoming of foreign visitors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I think Australians obviously have an affinity to coming to Indonesia. So that may be an area where we can really actually push a lot of uh, cooperation. Uh, I think 40% of our cruise ship tourism comes from Australia. Yeah. So yeah. that. that that's already, you know, happening, and and we can do more. And maybe what they call holiday work is that, yeah. So you can actually come here for extended period on, on holiday, but also work, and then vice versa for Australia, young Australians to come to Indonesia, uh, to to work. I think th those would be good areas to work on. I agree, and I think if I may add on, on tourism, I think the benefit is immediate for yes, the people that's in Indonesia. Right. Yeah. And if you look at the stages of the relationship between countries, they start with the tourism and then trade and then later on the yes. states will be investment. That's right. So yeah. if we can start with, uh, with the tourism, that will be something great. Yeah. And just finally, because it is cold, the Indonesia <laughs> update, you both helped convene it. Uh, why is it so important to have the, this event every year? <laughs> I think it's it's a really great way for uh, for many reasons. One is to really go in depth into particular issues to to get an understanding and an analysis, uh, and uh, the most important is to understand okay what should be the right thing to do or what should be the recommendation going forward on that particular issue. And you know this particular update we are focusing on the new normal, the new world, which is what so much uncertainty, uh, uh, so many questions to be asked. So I think this is very timely and I do think uh, this helps actually uh, increase Australia's understanding about Indonesia in, in an in-depth way. And somebody actually mentioned maybe we should have an Australia update in Indonesia, <laughs> yeah, our ambassador was just saying that. <laughs> yeah. uh, would you like to see that? Uh, yeah, yeah. When, and I think if I may add one, uh, another point is, this is not unique for Indonesia, this new trend. We are talking about this trend of this rising economic nationalism, mm -hmm. you know, the issue of sovereignty is happening in many countries in the world, not only in Indonesia. And we need to go into, you know, uh, in depth about the, uh, to get to know about what's the, the, the reasons behind it. And of course, you know, you're talking about the Australia update, you probably need to have this Australia update in Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>